Tuesday, August 13, 2013, in Hadabakoa, Dominican Republic, similar to our Friday the 13th here in the States, there's a superstition of sorts that goes along with any Tuesday the 13th in the Dominican. They believe that bad and evil things tend to happen on that day. In a rundown, barely standing dirt floor structure, that Daniela, who was nine at the time, and Jessica, who was three, had called home for the first few years of their lives. Daniela and Jessica watched as unspeakable things happened between their parents. Daniela stood frozen until she felt a tap on her shoulder. To this day, she believes that God was touching her on the shoulder, nudging her to move. In the middle of unbelief and panic, Daniela made a choice that saved her and Jessica's lives. She grabbed Jessica by the arm and ran to the backyard and hid in the rabbit cage until they knew they were safe. God delivered Daniela and Jessica from the hands of their earthly father. He rescued them from a man who intended to harm them. What an amazing God we serve. To deliver means to save, rescue, or set something free. I want to drop to my knees like I have so many times in the past few weeks and plead with God to come down and deliver us. It's a mess down here. God, deliver us from this evil, from this sickness. Father, people are losing family and friends that they care about. Loved ones don't even get to see them or give them a proper burial. Doctors and nurses are facing traumatizing situations on a daily basis. Children whose only form of safety and structure that they find at school every day has been ripped away from them. Our friends in Uganda, who were only eating one meal a day before all of this happened, are finding it difficult to even find that one meal. People are suffering with anxiety and depression, and there are people who think that alcohol and drugs are the only way out of this mess. People are losing their jobs. They're getting laid off. Father, we need you to come down and deliver us. We find a similar story in Exodus 5, starting in verse 6. And it says, That day Pharaoh commanded the overseers of the people, as well as their foremen, Don't continue to supply the people with straw for making bricks as before. They must go and gather straw for themselves. But require the same quota of bricks from them as they were making before. Do not reduce it, for they are slackers. That is why they are crying out, Let us go and sacrifice to our God, they say. Impose heavier work on them. They will be occupied with it and will not pay attention to deceptive words. The Israelites were slaves in Egypt, and their lives had just gotten worse. Their workload remained the same, but they were not given the supplies they were given in the past to do the same job. Sounds very familiar to stories that I've heard in our medical field today. Doctors and nurses are required to do the same job as before without the same supplies as they used to have in the past. God promised in Exodus 6, verse 6, He said, Therefore tell the Israelites, I am the Lord. I will bring you out of forced labor of the Egyptians and rescue you from slavery to them. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and great acts of judgment. I will take you as my people and I will be your God. You will know that I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the forced labor of the Egyptians. He made a promise to them to deliver them. In the same way, we need God to deliver us. We need him to deliver us from COVID and everything that's happening in our world because of this sickness. 
We need him to deliver us from maybe more than COVID. Maybe we need to del- him to deliver us from what COVID is revealing to us about ourselves. From our idols. From our Egypt. In scripture, Egypt represents the world, the ways of the world, the idols the Israelites worshipped when they lived in Egypt. An idol is something, anything, that stands in between you and God. Something that gets your time and attention before or more than God. It could be money, status, success, food, sports. If any of you out there are NFL fans, my husband was born and raised in Tampa Bay, Florida. Tampa, Florida. And he is a huge Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan. And if you've been paying attention to the NFL at all, you would know that very recently two very big name players went to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And we have been spending a lot of time in our house talking about the entire unbelief of this situation and praying that there is an NFL season this year so that we can enjoy the fruit of Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski playing for Tampa Bay. Now, God isn't against my husband or anyone being a sports fan. What he does care about is that if this becomes an obsession and more important than your relationship with him, any of those things I mentioned before and a whole other list of things can become idols in our lives. And I feel like this time of quarantine has allowed some of those idols to surface. We have more time to wrestle with issues that we have kept well hidden in the busyness of our life. The idols of work, being constantly entertained, sports, food, our children's sporting events, and everything that they're typically involved in. Now, it is no easy task to face those idols head on, especially alone. So I want you to find something, some comfort in something that we find in this scripture about the Israelites. And that is, God sees you. In Exodus 3, verses 20, sorry, Exodus 2, verses 23 through 25, it says, After a long time, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned because of their difficult labor, and they cried out. And their cry for help because of the difficult labor ascended to God. And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and with Jacob. And God saw the Israelites, and God knew. So I'm here to tell you this morning that God sees you. He sees what you're going through. He sees all the times that you've tried in your own strength to demolish the idols in your life. And he wants to prove his power over those idols. He wants to deliver you from those idols. God heard the cries of the Israelites and he sent Moses to fulfill his plan of deliverance. God instructed Moses to go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. We find this story in Exodus 5. And I want to scream, COVID, let my people go. Now, if you're watching this right now, you are my people. Why are you my people? Because you're God's people. I want to scream, let my people go. The people in my church, in my community, in my state, my country, and my world. Let my people go. It feels a little bit like the story of the 10 plagues that we find in Exodus 7. And God sends 10 different plagues to convince Pharaoh that he should let the Israelites go. He sends the first plague is when... He turned the water of the Nile into blood. 
The second plague, he sends frogs that cover the whole territory. And then there's gnats and there's swarms of flies and there's the death of their livestock. And there's a plague of hail and locusts and darkness. And finally, the death of every firstborn son. If your door wasn't covered with the blood of the lamb. So it seems a little familiar to what we're going through right now. Maybe today will be the day of deliverance. Maybe today things will change in our world. Every time Moses goes to Pharaoh and says, let my people go, and a plague happens and Pharaoh says, no. And in our world, I feel like I'm saying maybe today things will get better. And then a new restriction gets put into place. And then maybe today, And then the distancing order is extended. And then maybe today, and then I hear of a family member of a friend who's battling COVID. Maybe today, and then, and then, and then. I've heard this story of the 10 plagues so many times in Sunday school over and over. I can't tell you how many times I've colored a picture of locusts or boils. And as I was reading through this scripture, preparing for this message, God showed me something amazing. In multiple different ways, through the word and books and devotionals, God revealed to me that each one of the 10 plagues, God was proving his power over the Egyptian gods, little g. Ra, the sun god, and the ninth plague with darkness, Hopi, the god of the Nile, the first plague where God turned the water into blood. Hect, a goddess with the head of a frog, the second plague of the frogs. God was proving his power over every one of the Egyptian gods that the Israelites had experienced when they lived in Egypt. God wants to do the same thing for you. He wants to prove his power over the idols that you are worshiping. He sees you and he wants to deliver you. So what role do we play in this deliverance? Let's read Exodus 2 verse 23 again. It says, after a long time, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned because of the difficult labor and they cried out. God wants us to cry out to him, to spend time in honest prayer, to confess out loud that we have been choosing something over him so he can deliver us. There's a power that comes in out loud confession to what you're struggling with. God sees you, so cry out to him. He sees you. You are seen and known by the God of deliverance. Deliverance is a process. It's messy. God doesn't always take us out of pain and discomfort. He delivers us by refining us, by giving us everything we need to walk through the journey of of deliverance with him by our side. He wants to strip away those idols. And that's a process. It's a painful process. Exodus chapter 5 through chapter 17 is a good portion of this story that we're talking about this morning. Now, we're not going to spend the rest of our time together reading every single verse of all of those chapters. But I encourage you to take the time this week to read them and see what God is speaking to you through this story. Every part of this deliverance story is a process. The plagues seemed never ending. Every day Moses would go and say, let my people go. And then Pharaoh would say, nope, not today. And finally, after the worst of the plagues were over, Moses went to Pharaoh and all over again, he said, let my people go. And Pharaoh finally said, get out of here. Fine, I don't want you here. I want you to go. You and all the Israelites, I want you to go. And so they do. They leave, only to make it to the shore of the Red Sea. 
and they have no idea how they're going to make it through. God's going to have to deliver them all over again, and he does. He opens up that sea and allows the Israelites to walk on dry land. But the width of that sea and the amount of Israelites that needed to walk across that dry ground would have taken them a month, an entire month, another process in this plan and journey of deliverance. And then they get to the other side of the Red Sea, only to be led into the wilderness, where they spent 40 years. 40 years! It took for God to finally get Egypt out of them. He had delivered them out of Egypt, but it took another 40 years to get Egypt out of them, the idols that they served, the way of life that they lived. It was another process in the story of their deliverance. So because deliverance is a process, that it is important that we stand firm through the process. In Exodus 14, 13, it says, Moses answered the people, do not be afraid Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, will, you will never see again. So stand firm on the promises of God. In Isaiah 43, verse 16, it talks about the deliverance of rebellious Israel. And... It says, this is what the Lord says, who makes a way in the sea and a path through the raging water, who brings out the chariot and horse, the army and the mighty one together. They lie down, they do not rise again. They are extinguished, put out like a wick. Do not remember the past events. Pay attention, pay no attention to things of old. Look, I am about to do something new. Even now it is coming. Do you see it? Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. He promises to make a way. So stand firm while you're walking that out. I have the privilege of knowing Daniela and Jessica and Phyllis because God led our church to partner with Fight Ministries a few years ago. Phyllis lives in Hanabakoa with Daniela and Jessica. Luke, Naomi, and their three kids, Ethan, Esther, and Ezekiel, live right now on the property that is almost finished, that will be housing girls who have been rescued from the sex trafficking trade in the Dominican Republic. To this day, Daniela and Jessica are still walking out the process of deliverance. There are still things from their past, the trauma and evil that they witnessed as young girls that they are still working through. God is using Phyllis and Luke and Naomi, teachers at their school, the word, and a community of believers to walk with them through the process of deliverance. It hasn't been easy, but the promise is that God will deliver. God doesn't promise that you have to do it alone. He says he will be with you. And I want to encourage you to surround yourself with a group of believers who can help walk you through that process. Saturate yourself in the word and resolve to not get up, give up until you're free. It's a process. So stand firm. God wants us, God wants to deliver us so that. He doesn't want to deliver us just for us. He doesn't want to deliver us so that we can be comfortable, pain-free, and happy. This is an important piece of deliverance, but there is so much more. He wants to deliver us so that we can be free. So that we can be free to shout from the mountaintops what God has done for us. So that we can be free to witness the power to be a witness of the power of God's deliverance. He wants to give us a testimony of deliverance. He wants to give us a story that we can share 
and bring people to faith in him because of the great deliverance he has brought about in our lives. In the book of Esther, you find a story of one person who changes the future of an entire group of people. In Esther 4.14, it says, For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will rise from another place. But you and your families, you and your father's family will perish. And who knows? But, do you, but that you have come to your royal position for a time such as this. Esther made a choice. She chose to fast and pray and find a way to play a role in deliverance. And because of her faithfulness, she delivered with God by her side, an entire group of people. A few weeks ago, Dave talked about the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And they were thrown into a fiery furnace by a man named Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar didn't believe in the God that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego served. But after they came out of that furnace, in Daniel 3, verse 29, these are the words of Nebuchadnezzar. He said, No other God delivers like your God. Remember that. No other God delivers like your God. Stand on that promise so that... Daniela and Jessica's story is reaching across an ocean to witness to you the power of God's deliverance. My girls had the opportunity to come with me last summer to serve at Fight Ministries. And our kids, my two daughters, Ayla and Maya, Luke and Naomi's daughter, Ethan, da- son, Ethan, and Phyllis's daughters, Daniela and Jessica, got into a little bit of trouble. Surprise, surprise. There was a little discrepancy about who was or was not standing on a ping pong table. Daniela knew the truth, and she wasn't going to rest until the truth came out. So Daniela, at 15 years old, fasted for four days until the truth finally came out. She's a witness to me and my daughters, and now Daniela and Jessica are witnesses to you of our amazing God and his power to deliver us so that we can be free to be a witness to others. There's a few important things that I want to challenge you to do because of this message this morning. I'm going to challenge you to speak out loud. Speak out loud the idols that you're wrestling with. There is a power in this out loud confession There's something that changes when we confess out loud what we are struggling with. Deliverance can be spoken over your own life. Speak deliverance daily. In Psalm 32, Psalm 32, verse 7, it says, You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. There have been a few songs that have gone around and around in my head since I've been preparing this message, and I've added them to the resources on our notes. So if you go to our church app and go to notes, you'll find notes for this message that you can fill in the blanks, but you can also find resources on there. And there are lists of songs and devotionals and books that I've read that have helped me prepare for this and help me walk out some deliverance in my own life. In Exodus 15, the entire chapter is Moses' song of deliverance. Go and read it. Spend some time. Miriam gets out her tambourine and they sing praises to God for the deliverance that he gave to them after the Red Sea. So speak it out loud. Confess out loud what you're struggling with, the idols that you're wrestling with. And then speak out loud deliverance over your own life, whether it's reciting scripture or finding a song to sing on repeat. And finally, cry out to God like the Israelites did in prayer, in real, honest prayer 
about what you're struggling with and what you're going through and what idols you need to be delivered from. So maybe God wants to deliver us from us. Maybe he wants to reveal some things to us that we are in need of deliverance from. Something that we're enslaved to and we don't even know it. I heard a story about a group of men right here in Michigan. They would walk around, uh, around the yard along the outdoor fences of the prison that they were incarcerated in. And they would pray and seek God together. And they came to a realization. They said, we know that we're in prison. We know that we're in chains. But they could see that so many of us on the outside from where they were standing, so many of us are not locked up behind physical bars, but we're in prisons that we can't even see. We could be in chains and don't even know it. Maybe God is using this time of pain and uncertainty to lead us to freedom, to open our eyes to see what we couldn't see when life was so busy and full of distraction, to deliver us from a bondage that we're stuck in, a way of thinking that needs to be shifted, an idol that we are worshiping, a job, success, status, entertainment, stuff, fear, anxiety, depression, comfort, isolation, or maybe there's a relationship that he wants to heal in the middle of all of this. Together, today, let's choose to stop begging and crying out for things to go back to normal. My hope is that things never go back to normal. Not back to the normal that we were living before. I pray that God changes things for good, for our good, yours, mine, and the entire worldwide body of Christ. I know what you're thinking. I can barely keep my faith intact and alive in the middle of all this. I can't even seem to be delivered from the idol of baking too many things and eating it all. But remember that he wants to deliver you so that, so that you can pray boldly, so that you can use your testimony to share with others. In the midst of this pain and uncertainty, I pray that we're refined with fire, that we willingly walk through the fire in our own lives so that we can come back together walking in the new things that God has for us, personally and collectively. We have a choice. We can choose to just survive or we can choose to thrive. We can choose to remain prisoner to the things of this world, or we can choose deliverance. We are the ones that activate God's promise of deliverance. It starts with us seeking him before our idols. Cry out to him, the God of deliverance. You pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for this word that you've given us. Thank you for being the God who delivers. God, I pray for every single person that's watching this today, and I ask you to come into their lives and begin that process of deliverance, to walk them through this tough road of deliverance. But God, we believe that that's exactly who you are and that's exactly what you desire for us and our lives. So walk us through it. Be with every single person that is watching this this morning and encourage their hearts and build them up and lift them up. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a wonderful week. Go to my3c.org and click on hashtag get connected and find out all the ways that you can get connected during this time.